we are talking about the referendum. Now, two individuals here, the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga and uh, the presidency, uh, the president, that is His Excellency, the president, that is uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. They made a handshake, and this is what led to, to the giving birth of the Building Bridges Initiative. The Building Bridges are expected to give a report in October, but there is one thing that might be uh, a challenge to the Building Bridges Initiative in terms of weighing in, where do we go, and that is the Punguza Mizigo. Remember, this is a proposal. The hashtag has been Punguza Mizigo Bill 2019. But what exactly is this bill all about? Let's take a look at it. Well, they say that by reducing parliament, we save 155 billion shillings. Punguza Bill says that by abolishing the deputy governor's position, we save 5.6 billion shillings. Abolishing nominations, we save uh, 30 billion shillings. Uh, uh, and uh, the adopting a one-term presidency, that is going to take seven years. That is, according to their proposal, will uh, uh, save us 20 billion shillings. Capac by, by capping salaries, we save 24 billion shillings. Automating voter registration, they say it will save 25 billion. And automating general elections will save 50 billion shillings. Remember, also concerning the general ele elections, they propose that your ID should be what you use to vote, not that you go again and register. They also propose that restructuring re independent commissions that will save 16 billion. And lastly, by severely punishing thieves of public money, this is with regards to corruption we save at least 3.5 trillion. Well, in total, their proposed constitutional amendment bill uh, will save Kenyans 3.78 trillion shillings according to the Punguza musical bill. And it, so far, has been, uh, has received uh, over 1 million signatures and has been taken to the, mem to the county assemblies. And after it has been passed, it will be taken over to Parliament, where we have the two houses, the Senate and the National Assembly, for approval. Uh, approval. Well, this is with regards to the referendum. Well, what is going to happen? What next? Will the members of county assembly approve this bill? Remember, they need uh, around 24 counties to say yes. Well, welcome. This is all about the uh, fight or the war concerning referendum. Divided opinion continues to greet the push for a referendum following the successful collection of over one million signatures by the Third Way Alliance, while some leaders support the call to cut the cost of government as proposed in the Puguza Mizigo initiative. Others have cautioned against rushing to amend the constitution. And I can say right now, all we are doing is recurrent, recurrent, there's nothing in development. And this is very serious for a country. So this is an area where we need to do something by reducing the number of people who are employed by Wanjiko. Those are members of parliament, the governors, and we can have few regional governments, and also we can reduce, we can remove the women rep and all that, because we need to have, a, and with the technology, you don't need many leaders nowadays. He wants to reduce the size of running government. I want to advise Ekuru Oko to do his mathematics properly. Perhaps because he's a lawyer, he's not very good with numerics. Let me tell him that the cost of running uh, parliament is only 1% of the entire cost of running national government. We don't want that in the whatever proposal to do in any attack. Governors, we are satisfied with the two terms. We want now to do to do other things. Nirazi Mahawa when you wanna propose, wanna pelekeza, walete details, wakizema tunataka president akue miakasaba. What reasons are you giving? It's like we are we are nurturing our new constitution, which we have not done enough. It's like uh, parents having children, and before they are even ten years old, you have given up and you are abandoning your child. Your child. I think as as a as a nation. We need to give time to our new constitution. National Assembly Majority Leader, while speaking in Garissa, supported calls for a referendum, but dismissed the proposals by a court of court. Members of parliament from pastoral communities who are their patron, we will agree in principle that our county assemblies 
will not approve the reduction of our constituencies. The Ekuru Okot party wants the number of MPs reduced from over 400 currently to less than 200. The party also seeks to have the positions of women representative, nominated MPs and nominated MCAs abolished in a bid to reduce the wage bill. Women leaders have vowed to campaign against any proposal seeking to reduce their space in leadership. At the moment, we have the gains that we have already achieved. We wouldn't want any of that to be lost. We don't want to lose the positions that we are holding. And as women, we just want to add on to what we already have. The Punguza Mizigo bill also seeks to change the presidential term limit to one term of seven years from the current two five-year terms. Kevin Washera, Chanoa News. All right. Referendum. Which way? Well, to help us demystify this, I am joined by Honorable uh, Bilo Kero. He, he is the former uh, Mandera County Senator. Karibu sana mshimiwa. Thank you. He's someone who can be able to help us understand. But now, uh, looking at what you've seen there, mm. referendum, do you support it? Do you think it is high time that we change the discussion and what should we be talking about precisely? Thank you. I think in, in principle, I... I don't support a referendum to amend the constitution, in principle. You don't support it? Because I think this constitution, um, the challenge we have is not with the inadequacy of the constitution, but um, in my view, the challenge we've had in this country is to implement the constitution uh, effectively. And, uh, you know, um, uh, that's the challenge in every aspect, whether it is the executive uh, or the legislature. Um, the challenge we have had is there is no commitment to um, implementing it to the letter or spirit, really, of the, of the Constitution. That is why we are having challenges. Um, uh, so there are, of course, um, always, I mean, anything, any law that is done by, you know, uh, human beings, there's always need to improve on it. But I don't think this Constitution is fundamentally flawed, uh, you know, to the extent that um, um, we really need to uh, amend it, that if we don't amend it, that something will, you know, things will go seriously wrong in this country. I don't, I don't think really. But, but, but doesn't that, ha that have, have an effect on the development of the nation? Remember, it's all about uh, thinking with regards to the number of representation. Do you think we are overrepresented as Kenyans? Because one person, <laughs> you, for example, can yeah. you are represented by a member of county assembly, by a member of parliament, by a senator, by a governor. Aren't we overrepresented? No, I, I think... It's the concept of democracy that we have in this country is called representative uh, democracy, uh, which means we can't have all the 50 million Kenyans going to parliament or going to the counties to represent them. We have represented by elected leaders, and that representative rep democracy requires representation at national level and not at grassroots level. And um, uh, it's the practice all over the world, and, and, and I think. It's, it's, it's the reason for this is democracy is not just for people to get an opportunity to have parliaments and assemblies to air their views. But I think the reason is because that is where you make decisions that affect you. So at county level, you need it so that decisions affecting that county or that region or that area is made by the people and they're the ones who determine what they want. At national level, as a nation also, we need to have representation so that we can decide on what we want. That is the practice all of us. So we don't look at it vertically and say, look, you have a president and a governor, why do you need an MP? And that, that, that's, not, that's not the way it's looked at. No, but so far, are you satisfied that with this constitution, no, we, we are can not take over the represented. country I, I, We are not overrepresented in my view. Um, uh, I, I think the argument that we are overrepresented is mm -hmm. misplaced. misplaced. When the Kregler Commission looked at that, and that was the key thing they were looking at post-207, uh, 208 violence, uh, they recommended that we need to increase representation. This is why the boundaries were reduced, were, were reviewed, and the consistencies were increased. And, and, and so they looked at, the, at the, the, the good practice, really, all over the world. Uh, how many people, for example, uh, should a member of parliament represent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a national parliament? And this is this is this is how they came up with the figure that that you know that over 33,000 should. And this is how they we ended up increasing the. the so I, I think these things are. Uh, critical. I, I think we are missing the point because what, what is critical in any nation 
uh, and particularly a country like ours, is that democracy, that opportunity to be able to express our views, to be able to, to, to determine what we want as, as, you know, as a people, as, as, as a region, as a county, as a, as a nation. So it is critical. We cannot, it's expensive, but I think there is no way you can negotiate uh, for a lack of democracy because the alternative would be chaos. I mean, the alternative is a dictatorship. When you say that you don't have representation, then what are you saying? That one person no, that is trying to be a dictator. Uh, so we, we won't. I think it's better, and that's why there is this level of, of, of representation, yeah. Well, Punguza Mziko is saying reducing parliament uh, will save 155 billion. As I had mentioned earlier, abolishing deputy governor's position, uh, nominations, nominated seats, uh, one having a one-term presidency, even talking about uh, the reduction of these seats, saving up to billions of shillings. You believe it will not save us billions as a, in terms of b budgeting? Well, obviously, you'll, you'll save I mean, money, but um, mm. I, I think it's, they, they looked at it from, uh, it depends on what perspective you look at. Okay. Um, our budget has been growing, uh, 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 you know, uh, significantly. I mean, uh, today the last budget we've had is 3.2 trillion. Um, yeah. That's a huge, uh, you know, budget. Um, so what, what you should be looking at when you say you want to punguza music or you want to reduce really is you look at that budget annually because the budget is done annually, mm -hmm. 3.2 trillion. Do we need that kind of expenditure? What is it for? Why is our budget so huge? Because what happens is that out of that 3.2 trillion, we are collecting taxes of about half and the other half we are borrowing. So the challenge here really is not about the money that is being spent. We'll be happy to spend even five trillion if we can have it. But I think the challenge is that we don't have that kind of revenue. One, two, that means you are taxing Kenyans more so that you generate that, that, that 50 percent of the revenue. Uh, three, you're borrowing money and sinking the country into huge debts. I think those are the concerns. Now, <coughs> from that perspective, yes, then there's need to reduce our expenditure. I think that should be the focus, how to reduce our public expenditure. Um, then I think the way they went about it, identifying what institutions are responsible for that mm -hmm. huge expenditure. I think that that's where they, uh, in my view, the, uh, you know, the, their focus was misplaced because parliament is, is about democracy, is about representation, is a critical institution without so which you are going to go down to democracy. So even if we, and the expenditure is not huge. But you I know mean, as, as you had, it's, it's not more than 1%. I mean, the total expenditure of budget, parliament is, it's about 1% of the 3 trillion. So, or one and a half percent. It's not, it's not all combined, National Assembly plus uh, the Senate. So, even if we scrapped the entire parliament, I mean, you're not going to really reduce our public expenditure by more than one percentage point, and the consequences will be grave. Then it means you'll have a dictatorship, really. So, um, the dictatorship in, in, in terms of now what is being, the, those proposing this bill of Punguza Mizigo? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, I think they have their focus. Uh, whoever drafted this bill, I think the focus was more of let's punish this, this institution because, you know, the, the, you know they're earning more salaries and they're getting, uh, they're very many. And <laughs> uh, I, I think well, that is where the focus was. Well, and, and, and they missed the point. I, I, I think really, yes, we have problems with our parliament. Yes, yes. Uh, they're always pushing for more pay. Mm -hmm. um, and and, 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 and that, that, that is a genuine um, concern. But I think to, to, to amend the constitution, uh, in order to reduce our public expenditure is really misplaced. The public expenditure is annual thing. But then h how I can we as a country reduce the public expenditure? Looking at what they're taking, well, I'll be the devil's advocate in this, in, in this case mm. here. When you talk about uh, reduction of expenditure, look at the salaries and renovation co commission. Uh, they have been in the spotlight for the past couple of weeks now, uh, even with, with regards to the members of parliament salaries. Uh, looking at how much we use even with regards to the projects as a nation. So far, r r uh, yesterday we just had uh, the CS or TH being uh, you know, in, uh, on the dock uh, mm -hmm. in the Milimali courts with regards to corruption. They have a proposal that will help curb corruption and this proposal will reduce expenditure. What do you believe is the solution for the country to reduce expenditure, if not this? You know, I've gone through that bill. Uh, I, I think, uh, with all due respect, the proposals they have for fighting corruption is very simplistic. Uh, it, it's about, you know, when you are <laughs> charged with corruption, mm -hmm. it must be determined within 30 days. 
the appeal must be concluded in 15 days. I mean, it, it's not yeah, realistic. You, you, you I mean, I mean this, this is, um, uh, you know, the rule of law. The people go to court. The courts as a process. You can't, you know, those things are not, some things you, are not You practical. believe it doesn't work like that? Uh, no, I don't think things are that, um, you know, and everyone who is charged with corruption must be given life sentence. If you steal a pencil and if you steal a trillion, it's you all go for life yeah. sentence. Some, I think they have been very simplistic on, on, on that. And I don't think it's... I think the challenge we have in this country, and in my view, the way to reduce this thing, is to enhance the institutions of accountability. Because like I said, it's lack of accountability that is creating a situation where we're ending up with a budget of three points. So if they focused mm -hmm. on that, for example, limiting the powers of, of the executive to borrow, limiting the powers of the government, to, uh, you know, of the executive to tax people, and, 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 and giving more powers to the judiciary in controlling, um, you know, the, the, the parliament, because parliament is what has been used to rubber stamped uh, all the decisions of the executive. That Even that the, the judiciary has been on the spot for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Uh, so the one positive thing I have seen really mm -hmm. in, the, in this thing is, is to check provisions they have made of checking the powers of the National Assembly by giving Senate powers to veto. So then, 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 then sort of the National Assembly, because that is where the challenge is really. Mm -hmm. Because even when you look at the current laws we have, uh, there, there really is enough provisions in law to check the executive. Because National Assembly can say, no, we're not approving 3.2 trillion. Mm -hmm. Go back and reduce your budget to 2, to two trillion. Well, we have to live within our means. Well, Go and reduce your debt. I mean, they're not doing it. They are simply accepting it. So, so I think the, the institutions of accountability, I think that is where we need more, you know, to tighten things. But I don't think if you start chasing, um, suck this guy and mm -hmm. reduce these MPs, and it's not going to help, uh, really, at the end of the day. So f starting from curbing corruption will not help? Uh, coming, they, they haven't really dealt, there, there's no, you know, new ideas in, in terms of fighting corruption that I've seen in that, in that, in that bill. I've gone through it, except, I mean, the focus is on the punishment and on, the, on, the, on, on how quickly to, uh, to deal with it, but, but there isn't really any other additional alarm. And it's not, by the way, it, it's not for lack of institutions. Mm -hmm that corruption is expanding in this country. We, I mean, we, we have do have institutions. the institutions. Yes, it's, it's the, it's, that's what I said. It's about accountability. It's about mm -hmm. lack of implementation. Mm -hmm. It's about the power. Nothing stops the president waking up in the morning and saying, look, my minister has been implicated this morning on the Good Morning uh, program on KBC. You know, the disclosures on that minister. Mm. He's fired. I'm firing him. But we can't... We, oh, oh. He's not firing. That can't happen. I'm sorry, if he doesn't <laughs> fire, he has the powers. He, he, need he does have the power. He does have the powers. But he said we, we cannot go for vigilante system. That's not vigilante. That's the law. That's all over the world. If I don't, if, if you have been implicated and you, you know, the, 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 and he, he has information. He's not like us. If the president gets information from many sources. He has information. And if he's able to act, and yeah. that's the practice all over. You are mentioned, you see people stepping down as ministers in the rest of the world, in, in developed countries. For you know, ten thousand, uh, twenty thousand dollars or something spent, on, and and it's it's about the office, political culpability. It's about taking responsibility. It's not about conviction. You know, here our focus is that unless you have been convicted in a law, in court of law, then you cannot. No, in government, it's enough for you to l step aside or to leave that job if there is political culpability. That means something happened in your ministry, you fail to take action. You are responsible and you go. That, that's the way it is. Mr. looking at Kenya, mm -hmm. I would not like to be negative, but we don't see anyone resigning. We are, no one will ever resign in any time to regards to corruption. They should be fired. They should be fired. And the president has powers. The governor has powers to fire his, 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 his executives. The president has powers in law to fire. Nothing But they, but they, they cannot do that. Huh? They cannot do that. For political expediency, they have not done it. But nothing stops them from firing. Absolutely, you can fire in the morning. I would, I would, I would just like you to maybe mention just uh, in general, but allow me to digress before I ask my question. Between the Senate, b b the Senate and the National Assembly, which one should be the up, up, upper house in your own view? Because that's where the debate at some point has come in. You know, each house has its own role. I mean, even global, even if you look at the U.S., every house has its own role. National Assembly. The world over the main responsibilities is always being in, 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 in setting the budgets, approving the budgets of the, of the, of the national government. Mm -hmm. so that, that has been a role that the National Assembly has always had. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Senate has always been uh, there in most countries to check the excesses of the National Assembly. Oversight. 
Yeah, it, it, it's about really quality control. I mean, mm -hmm. if you just have one institution, it becomes rogue and does whatever it wants. You know, then that, that's, the, that, that's why we have Senate in most the upper house to try and, uh, Senate as a upper house to try and limit the excesses of the National Assembly. But in our case, in addition, in the same way in the US and so forth, they look after the interests also of the countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you, in your own words, you say that the uh, claims that the financial burden or the ballooning budget expenditure is uh, the primary uh, you know, reason we should, that we should be reviewing it. You said we should not done that, that there is no problem with the, the f uh, what we have as a country, uh, even with regards to the budget expenditure, and that the National Assembly and County Assembly sizes are not to be blamed and uh, should w the claims that they should be downsized to save money is actually something that you don't vouch for, you feel it is uh, uh, not necessary. You said devolution is not a problem w with the county governments, hence proposals to reduce them isn't the solution. But then I wonder, wh why do you find these arguments uh, not only hollow and baseless, but in your own words, you say they are grounded in ignorance? Well, I, I think it's, it's pretty obvious that um, if you look at a budget of 3.2 trillion, and you say our problem is in the legislature. Mm. The total budget of legislature is about 40 billion. Uh, it's just about a percentage, one percent. Mm. Then you're missing the point. Because if you say you really want to punguza the musical, your main, the musical on the Kenyans is what? It's not taxes. It's the taxes, isn't it? Because that money is collected through taxes. Mm -hmm. Number two is the debt, because you also have to pay the debt through taxes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so really, at the end of the day, uh, what, what, what you need to look at is can we reduce the public expenditure? We can do that in several ways. One, mm -hmm. by rationalizing the size of government. Uh, this is something that we've talked about for many years, okay. uh, you know, as a country. And we, that's why in the new constitution we said the cabinet cannot be more than 18. Uh, but we have had a situation where the government, uh, the executive, uh, the president has, has circumvented that. And you find mm -hmm. instead of 18, then you create departments and then you create more permanent secretaries. And, you know, you still have the same thing. Number two. Mm. When we created the, in the new constitution the devolution, yeah. the understanding, and it's very clearly provided for in the constitution, is that most of the functions is supposed to be devolved, are supposed to be devolved to the counties. And resources are supposed to follow that, uh, you know, the functions. So we have a situation where, for example, in the Ministry of Health, 95, 96% of the functions of the ministry have been devolved to the county governments. Yet you find the ministry at national level is still intact and still getting budgets, you know, 50, 60 billion shillings mm -hmm. annually. Mm -hmm. When there is the role in the constitution is only on policy. You do this, you go to Ministry of Water, it's the same. That function has been devolved to the county governments. Yeah. In that constitution, you will find that even the water bodies, the regional water bodies, the, you know, the service, the water service boards, all these things are supposed to go down to the county government. But national government has decided not to release them. And so continue allocating hundreds of billions, you know, to these institutions. So, so when you look at the Ministry of Agriculture, it's the same. So you'll find that the challenge we have is national government did not want to or does not want to let go of their role completely. And they want to remain as they were before the constitution. And so consequently what's happening is that huge amounts of money is being allocated to the national as if nothing has happened. Yet mm -hmm. as, the if there's no devolution. as if there's no devolution. So you are given devolution 10%. Uh, of what you're spending. Some, got some county governments are even blaming the national government of sabotage. So what Kenyans need to look at is that out of the 3.2 trillion expenditure for 2019-20, mm -hmm. how much is going to the county government? It's 3.27 billion is what they're asking for through the Senate, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's exactly 10%. 10%. So, uh, I mean, really, we are missing the point that it's, it's we, have, we, have, we, have, we have an illustration where mm -hmm. Uh, we think devolution is... A, so the government is telling you, national government is telling you, the money is getting wasted in devolution. The money is getting wasted in national assembly. The money, you know, it's, it, you're being told of the wrong... Yet 90% of the money is being left to the executive, and that's where the trouble is. Do you feel the problem is within the executive? There's a lot of wastage. There's yeah. a lot of wastage. There's a okay. lot of inefficiency in national government, duplication. Uh, and, 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 and that's where if... Someone really looks at the text, and that is where my challenge with the National Assembly, because that's the responsibility. Mm -hmm. If they took a pen and pencil and went through what they allocate to the national government ministries, they can reduce our budget by half.
of which they, Conveniently, the, they the can't National use Assembly budget still wants allowances, house allowance, night allowances, affecting the budget well. well. Rational, you, you talked about rationalizing the size of government. Uh, just give me one example of how we can rationalize the size of government. Just one. One is this one I've just talked to you about. Um, the national government should see the roles that have been given to the devolution. For example, all those functions that are supposed to be done by the county government, you let it go. You let it go completely. Let, it, let all those institutions, that, that, well, whatever. That, that does it go. have anything to do with the, it's with the numbers? Because you are duplicating, yes. They are duplicating. Exactly what is happening is that the same thing, if national government is put, if, if countries are putting up water dams, mm. national government is putting up the same water dams, parliament is putting up through the CDF, national, you know, you are, you are duplicating. Number two, Meaning the ministries. They can rationalize by reducing the ministries' uh, 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 functions. Because those functions have been taken over by the county governments. Why do you have Afia House intact the way it was before devolution? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Hospitals are under the county governments. Except the referral hospitals, everything else had gone to the county government. At national level, we should only have the national referral hospitals and policy. But you find the same ministries there, they are getting you know, um, nearly a, a fifth of what the, count the entire county government combined are getting. You go to the Ministry of Agriculture, we are spending billions trying to put up irrigation at national level. That function is all gone to the county government. Give the money to the counties. Let them work on their own. Uh, so here we have dupli them. duplication of roles. So there, there is a lot of duplication. And, and that's and why I'm saying that you need to rationalize. They need to reduce, really, some of the functions and, and give it to the county. And, uh, and, and, and that's why uh, it brings us back to the specific individuals. Uh, if we have, for example, in health, uh, we have uh, the national government that has the ministry it has its own people in charge of health the health sector those who are in charge of uh, you know different departments within the national government the same departments in health can be found at the county level the county government where we have individuals in charge of the health departments this it goes across the board that is the basis of over representation that we were talking about earlier on no, it's not about representation. That is, this is, this is the duplication I'm talking about. This is the lack of rationalization. This is failure by the government to implement the constitution. The constitution is very clear. These functions go to devolution. They should not be at national level. The government says, no, I'm keeping these functions. Okay. So what happens? Take provincial administration. Mm -hmm. The law is very clear in the constitution. Within five years, they should have really, you know, uh, you know, it, it should, it should have been changed completely into 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 but now what do we have we have provincial administration mm -hmm. and county administration parallel in the same so i think there is no commitment to really effectively implementing our constitution this is the challenge this is why we have this ballooning budget all right uh, do, do you think that the creation of the world development fund and increasing allocation to the fund uh, of funds from the national government to the county from 15 to 35 percent as proposed will enhance the implementation of development projects uh, by the counties. Yeah. The, the, the increase, the increase of the money to devolution mm. will always be welcome. I, I think there's no one who would, I mean it's common sense. When you have given all those functions to the counties, yes. you expect more resources to go to the counties. Mm -hmm. So raising the minimum to 35 from 15, from 15. Uh, to 35, it will work out. It, 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 it's a good thing. But that's not where the challenge is. Okay. That's not where the challenge is. Because even now with a minimum of 15, mm. you can still have 50%. Do you but the problem we're having is, national is, is the way the National Assembly has insisted that we will give this amount. And the Senate says, no, this amount. And so what these guys should have done in mm -hmm. the Punguzum, so they, they've really missed the point. All they need to do is give powers to the Commission on Revenue Al uh, Allocation. Because that is an independent commission set up to share the money between the national and the county governments. They are required by law to give recommendations to the parliament. But parliament, for whatever reason, has always ignored, National Assembly in particular. Mm -hmm. So all they need to do is say that the recommendation by, national, by Commission on Revenue Authority is binding. So that if, because these guys look at the, what are the national interests, uh, what does national government need, uh, compared to what counties need, and they allocate money, you know, um, rationally between the two. So I think that's what they need to do, um, give CRA more powers. That's, that would solve the issue of whether you raise the figure minimum to 15 mm -hmm. or to 35 is not really the issue because mm -hmm. it, it, the maximum is open. 
So that's where the have, challenge do, is. Do we have sufficiency in terms of funding to the, to no, the counties? No, it's grossly inadequate. I don't think fund, fund counties are getting, most counties are getting money just enough to pay their, to meet their current expenditures. That's mm -hmm. why we have challenges in many counties. And that's why we're talking about now the uh, revenue That's allocation. why they need more money, because that's where the development needs to be. Mm -hmm. National government does not need to carry out development. They need to give the money to the counties to determine what the people want. The whole idea about evolution is for the people to determine what they want. It's not for national government to decide for them what they want. I think that is where the issue is. Uh, that's where the issue is. Now, on the World Development Fund, I think that is misplaced. I think it's just an attempt to try and put in a sweetener for <laughs> county <laughs> assemblies. <laughs> or votes. Uh, to get the votes for the county assemblies. Uh, and, and because we have a challenge with CDF. Okay. That should have been scrapped. And the court ordered it should be scrapped, really, mm -hmm. because... That was brought in when devolution was not there in order to devolve funds to the count to you know to constituencies. But yeah. I think you don't need um, CD uh, words is even making the matter worse uh, b b b because <laughs> I, I think at count you cannot. I have seen what happened when devolution started. You know what counties were doing mm. is they decided to give money, you know, to the wards. So every ward gets money, and you're told bring your proposals. They just want a million for a classroom, a million for this. That's not development, really, because you need people to sit as a county. It, it and leads to wastage and even corruption. Yes, as a run. county, what do they need? They need a county referral hospital. They need a county college. They need a county, you know. This. It's better for the money to be determined at county level. They decide on what is suitable, and they can have some development in one ward and another development in another ward. But to allocate money at ward level. Mm. It's, it's not a solution, really. It's, it's, it's really going to y mess you're up. You're saying it's just trying to please the county, to, to please uh, the county yes, assemblies. So they vote. So they uh, <laughs> that's the whole idea. <laughs> but now speaking of voting, do you, do you think it will pass uh, within the 24 counties? Remember, no. even I remember Eden Dwale had said, and I quote, Pastoralists are not ready to pass the bill if it will reduce MCA seats and constituency-based seats. If members of the Garissa County Assembly pass the bill, we shall deal with them as a community. No, uh, obviously there's, no, there's nothing you can do about it. But um, uh, I, I think, of course, as an MCA, I would feel uh, happy passing that bill. One, because more money will come to the county. Mm -hmm. Two, our, 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 our seats as MCA are reserved. Three, there's a provision for world development. <laughs> and so for MCAs, <laughs> there's every reason why they should pass. And people will have no problem with it in Garissa because then there's more money going to Garissa. You feel it but I think the, it issue, the issue is it is likely to face very stiff position not passed because of the fundamental reason that in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, Baba has not said it and Uhuru has not said it and so, so on and so on. It's the political heavyweights that Kenyans look at at the end of the day. Circumfancy? Well, we, we seem to be as a nation um, in the grip of this a uh, big man, <laughs> uh, big man syndrome. Uh, so that we we wait to see what the you know the big political parties and the leaders and the guys who are who roll those uh, bankroll those institutions determine. And so uh, they will look at Punguza Migizo, Nyanani, who is pushing it, Mr. Kuru, and, and you know th that's the way Kenyans look at things, even if it's in their interest. It, you, you know you always look at what Mr. Manini, what have the, the big guys said, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's likely to make it very unlikely that it will pass. Na kama jaongea, hatufanyi kitu yote. Yes. ODM chairman John Badi had said that uh, he described the bill as populist, with no real solutions to the country's challenges, and he even advised the members of county assemblies not to uh, be distracted by it, but to wait for the Building Bridges Initiative no, report. No, it's, it's, it's wrong. I mean, there, there are good things in the bill, I and mean, with all due respect, there are positive mm. things in the bill. Mm. For example, um, I said earlier, given Senate the, the, the power, uh, the, veto the, power the, the veto power is critical so that they can check the excesses of the National Assembly. All the cures we have in terms of the poor kind of legislation that we have, the taxes that Kenyans have been taxed unnecessarily by the national government, you know, some of these things are, and, and the failure of accountability, the ballooning expenditure of national government, this is the failure of the National Assembly. So I think having an institution like the Senate, oversee the functions of, you know, to, to check the, 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 the National Assembly. This is, this is, this is important. I like, I like that bit. Mm -hmm. um, the National Assembly has approved appointment of CSEs and ambassadors and people. And um, a week or later, you found those people have been implicated again in corruption. They have not mm -hmm. bothered to, you know, they've always looked at other interests. Really. And so I think to have that checks and balance critical like we have in U.S. and so forth. All right. Number two, there are other positive things like what you said earlier on um, uh, IBC. Mm -hmm. That, you know, let us just have any Kenyan with, a, with, with an ID walking into the poll booth and voting. 
You don't need voters registration cards. That, and that your ID things. is your registration um, card. A one year term for presidency is a brilliant idea. S seven it, years, actually. Seven years. Seven it, years it, meaning really one term. It's a refreshing idea, and I think it's, it's brilliant. And I, I, I think the, the arguments for it, you know, it, it, it's because the challenge we have in this country is everybody, every group, every tribe wants to be in power. So I want time and you go, because re-election is always where the challenge is. So I, I think that's also brilliant. So there are positive things in, 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 the, in the bill. It's not all gloom. Um, and, and so, but I see where Mbadi is coming from. Mbadi and his, his, his team, they are all about BBI and Baba. <laughs> and so, yeah, but, but that is really misplaced. Um, BBI has no legal frame it's not established under any legal framework. I they mean it's, they it's, should not wait for the, the report by the Building Bridges Initiative. I, I don't I don't think that, that that would not be any different from this one. It serves a particular interest. You know here we are we are talking about two I don't know if I said bills, uh, the Building Bridges Initiative and the Punguza Mizigo. They both at some point, uh, some members of parliament say they need to be merged together. That uh, uh, Dr. Ikuro Court should bring the Punguza Musical Initiative into the bill, proposal to the Building Bridges Initiative and uh, combine them because they're both working towards the referendum. You see, in the BBI, we do not know what they want. They have not recommended a referendum yet. Mm -hmm. They haven't issued any report. And they have yeah. said very clearly mm -hmm. that they have not determined or decided that there will be a referendum. Yes. I, it, it's just a perception out there that um, uh, because the people who set it up, Uhuru and uh, Raila, mm -hmm. have talked about, you know, referendum. So there, there is a perception that this thing is all about. It's all about it. But, uh, it, but, but know, they have not yet given the report. We expect they haven't. In, uh, so October. I, I think I think it's it's not going to be taken for granted. I don't think it's that easy that they come up with a bill. Mm -hmm. and automatically Kenyans will vote for it um, because it came from the BBI. I, I, I think this, it's, it's not going to be that. I think Kenyans are, are tired about, uh, you know, if, uh, frankly, the, the theme about Kenya is Punguza Mizigo is there. Kutoka is Punda the, the Punda Mechoka. Is, so it's, it's what you want to bring as BBI must be something really that is so critical that you can convince Kenyans that, yes, I need a referendum for it. But Kenyans Otherwise are convinced. If, if he, they can get one million signatures. But it Kenyans are not convinced about what? What do they want? Kenyans have not Puna said Yeah, but what do they want? So scrap parliament, scrap uh, presidency, scrap, what do they want? to scrap? Kenyans have not said we want, <laughs> <laughs> Kenyans want good governance. Good uh -huh. governance is not about, the, it's not about constitution. The constitution is perfect. There's nothing wrong with our constitution. What we have is a problem of governance. So it, it's about the people, it's about the persons who are running the institutions. Otherwise we have the right institutions, we have the right uh, you know the legal framework. We have everything. Mm. It's about it's about accountability. It's about leadership. So I, I don't think we have we, we the challenge we have in this country is every time something is wrong, we blame institutions. We don't blame the people. Uh, so so, so, in, in this so case we, we keep saying let us amend this again. So what happens if we amend the constitution and again we still have problems? We we'll say let us amend the constitution again. again. No, th I don't think. But that's they say why the constitution should be there just to you know after it has worked for some time it can be reviewed. There's nothing like wrong with the constitution since 2010 till now. The argument I know Kenambadi and his team have been using BBI. It's all based on something they call inclusivity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which Pukuza Mizigo may be at some Inclusive, point. What is inclusivity? <laughs> the constitution <laughs> is very clear about inclusivity. This constitution we have. Mm -hmm. In every chapter, on chapter 10 about the goals, um, you know, this guy, the inclusivity is one of the key things. What it means is that for every appointment, for example, mm -hmm. that is being made in this country, whether it's cabinet, or whether it's judges, or whether it's, uh, you know, anybody, any appoint ambassadors, whatever, you must take into consideration the diversity of the country in terms of religion, in terms of regions in terms of ethnicity this is clear in the constitution so th there has to be inclusivity the constitution already provides for it what these guys are asking for is inclusivity on the high table and state house we should so be included that is so inclusivity. that you contest for presidency if you miss you want to be included in the table <laughs> uh, i mean that is really something kenyans should reject and that is what drives this bbi there's nothing else there's, there's the perception that if you all run you know, the leaders of all these tribes or regions mm -hmm. should be allowed to sit on the high table so that they can eat. So, 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 so you, you believe the Building Bridges Initiative, B okay, BBI uh, is uh, inclined towards certain individuals or certain people to this favor is them. This is what is on the media. 
This is why you find certain political groups are really pushing for it. And they have always said in public rallies that we want our persons there. We want more people to be included in, the, in, the, in running the government. Uh, so that that's, you can see clearly, they have said what exactly this is about, but of course we'll wait for what comes out. Um, well, mm. uh, at some point, uh, if you go for a referendum, it will, we will have to get a referendum question. You know. last yes. in, in the last referendum that we had, we only had one question. Uh, do you want the constitution or do you want it to be changed? So it was uh, yes or no machungwa. Mm. And uh, <laughs> this, but, but, but now, in this referendum, we ha we, 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 at some point we need to get the specific clauses of the constitution that needs to be amended, mm. of which you say we don't need a referendum. But they say that we need a referendum, and uh, uh, they are working under uh, you know, Article 257 of the constitution. Y we will need a, a, a referendum question. Do you believe that at some point we can be able to acquire that in a way that will help Kenyans? I think obviously the people who set up BBI have an objective, and the objective is they want to bring some changes. Even uh, if whether those changes are to serve their interest or not, that is the objective. Mm -hmm. Now, they would probably do that, from what we are reading in the media, through an amendment to the Constitution. Um, and an amendment to the Constitution is likely to be a series of amendments to the Constitution. It's not a question of yes or no. Yes. Uh, like the when we had we a new constitution, because there we got rid of the old constitution and brought a new one, so it was a yes and no. But this one, uh, specific amendments that you have to vote um, for. Um, so depending on what question they will bring, mm -hmm. because up to now there's no idea what they want. Do they want to scrap this presidency system and bring parliamentary? Um, or b b we don't know what they want to do. But, but, but maybe they may even have a case where we have so many questions and the Kenyans will have to choose with regards to this, this will amend this part of the constitution. It will be very difficult to have a situation where you have many amendments and you have to vote for every amendment, mm -hmm. uh, you know, separately. Uh, that, that would be a bit uh, of a challenge in, 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 in a referendum. Uh, it's, it would always be easier to have a bill uh, just like the one of Punguza, very clearly done bill on the amendments you want to the constitution, mm -hmm. and then Kenyans will be asked to vote for the bill, uh, you know, uh, in totality. Well, on a yes, yes or, or no. no? Yes, so that then once it's yes, then it amends the whole constitution. Um, but not on, on, on clause by clause. I mean, you vote for the bill and, and that's it. Uh, but so uh, I think, um, and, and, and from our tradition, they're likely to put in sweeteners, um, and of course, everybody's uh, ideal sweetener nowadays is devolution. So they'll probably put in something on devolution, <laughs> enhancing <laughs> money in theory, and yeah. they're not doing it in practice today. The people who are now pushing for this thing mm. are the same ones who are challenging devolution money every day. In you, the you're talking about Punguza Mizigo? No, no, I'm saying the BBI. The BBI. Um, they are likely already. The, what they, you, you hear what uh, the ODM, the Jubilee guys who are supporting BBI, are saying that, you know, they'll. Uh, increase money for the counties and so forth. Mm -hmm. But in reality, those who are sitting in the National Assembly today, from those political parties, are the ones who are most vocal in resisting more locations to be given to the counties. But when they are out there, it's always about, oh, we are champions of devolution, we are the guardians of devolution, we want more money for devolution, but in the National Assembly, they don't want a penny to go. So. It, it, I, I think devolution will always be used by both si by, by BBI or anybody else to try and get votes in a referendum. But in my view, um, let us wait for the constitution and I mean the, for their question and let's see what they want to uh, come up with um, because they have not yet decided on what what they want. But let's see. Now le le let me look at democracy. You mm -hmm. mentioned democracy earlier mm -hmm. on, and um, this is with regards to one statement that uh, the majority leader of the National Assembly, that is Honorable Eden Wali, had. Uh, talked about now just your opinion concerning this when he said that uh, uh, if members of Garissa County Assembly pass the bill we shall deal with them as a community don't you think this is uh, at some point suppressive in a way of course that, that is a threat but in my view it's a hollow threat I mean <laughs> it, it doesn't really I mean politicians always make those kinds of um, uh, statements but uh, I don't I don't think there's any um, uh, you, thing you, you can do as a parliament mm -hmm. to the MCS because MCS are elected representatives of the people. They're okay. elected in the same way you've been elected. 
Mm -hmm. And um, they are, the reason why we set up uh, county assemblies is so that we can have represent representative democracy at mm -hmm. the grassroots level. Um, so MCS would also be selling, uh, their, 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 you know, why, why they think they support uh, this particular bill. And they look at it from the point of view of that more money is coming to the wards, more mm -hmm. money is coming yeah, to the counties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but these wards will so not forth. have an effect, but, e um, effect on them. But I agree on, th there's one thing about what he says which might make sense, mm -hmm. that if you reduce parliament to 147 members of parliament, uh, and then the pastoralists, uh, you know, some communities will look like we, we would see clearly that the number of seats they have in parliament would have been reduced, and therefore yeah. their clout mm -hmm. uh, in, in parliament will be reduced. And, and so, in that context, yes, uh, that it is disadvantageous for us to have fewer members of parliament, uh, and therefore let's not allow this thing. Uh, that so it's it's people. But will that's look where rationalisation comes in. Uh, yeah, but people will look at uh, you know too. I mean, between having more MPs and getting more money to their counties. You know, and more power to their counties. So, it's, it's confusing you know, they'll, at they'll some point. So, I think people would, uh, if I was an, a, a, a resident in Gariza, yeah. I would I would go for more resources and more power to the county uh, <laughs> than than more MPs in the National Assembly. All right. So as we bring this discussion to a to a close here, uh, just uh, in just less than thirty seconds, Moshimiwa, what would you advise Kenyans to do? What should we look out for as a country? Do we go for it? Do we leave it there? No, I think as Kenyans, our challenge has always been about good governance. It's about governance, really. We have no other problem. We have beautiful constitution. All right. We have adequate legal environment. We have institutions of governance, very good institutions, by the way, better than um, you'll find in many parts of Africa. Uh, so it's about the people. It's about getting good leaders into parliament. It's about getting accountability for the leadership. Okay. Uh, and, and so, but with regards to this particular uh, agitation for referendum, I think Kenyans need to look at um, what exactly is, is the objective of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the referendum or the questions that are before the referendum. So mm. if they don't fundamentally change the lives of Kenyans, we should reject it. We should not waste our time uh, amending the constitution when we are not able to implement the existing one fully. It's a waste of time. Mm. <laughs> all right. That is the Honorable Bill O'Carroll, former Mandera County Senator. Karibu sana. Uh, and thank you very much for airing your views with regards thank to referendum. You, Ram. Thanks, Ram. Looking forward to interacting with you and even further. We shall keep this d discussion going on. We have come to the end of uh, this show. That is a good place to end the discussion. See you again tomorrow morning on Good Morning Kenya at 6 a.m. On behalf of everyone, my name is Roa Maguko. May God bless you and God bless the work of your hands.